What is going on everyone? It's Sean from All Things EV and this video is all about building a case for why I think Tesla is about to become their own battery cell supplier. We're all very familiar with Tesla's lineup at the moment. It's the Model S, Model X, Model 3, and soon to be next year, the Model Y, as well as a few other vehicles that we are anticipating them going to production on very soon, including the Roadster, the new generation Roadster, as well as the Tesla semi-truck. And what we will see here in the very near future is the Tesla pickup truck, or some people are calling it the Model B. But how does Tesla fulfill all of this battery cell demand for these vehicles if Panasonic has been struggling to reach that 35 gigawatt hour theoretical cell capacity at Gigafactory 1. My hypothesis is that Tesla needs to become their own battery cell supplier to meet this pending demand. This is why Tesla's battery and powertrain day coming up in early 2020 will be so fundamental to not only Tesla's future product line, but the rest of the electric vehicle market. In fact, my friend Gally and I were talking about this the other day, and I went ahead and asked him to share some things on camera about why he's so excited about this event. What up, Sean Mitchell's channel. Thanks for having me on. Wanted to give my quick analysis on what I think is coming at Tesla's battery and powertrain investor day and why this is so, so important. So one of Tesla's key competitive advantages is they have the most efficient battery packs on the market and they are building them themselves at the Gigafactory in Nevada, which I just visited. This facility and the technology at this facility is the reason why Tesla's been able to ramp production of its Model 3 in just two years to a run rate of 300,000 per year. As much as you hear about struggles for, for Tesla's ramping uh, production, this is, you know, went incredibly smoothly by automotive standards and is going to be a challenge that every other auto company and competing EV startup wants is going to need to face. How do we get, you know, hundreds of thousands of these battery packs to power all our EVs? Well, that's exactly why Tesla is so forward thinking in building this Gigafactory to actually supply, you know, millions and millions of these 2170 cells to build the capacity for hundreds of thousands of EV battery packs. So now in early 2020, Tesla is set to have its battery and powertrain investor day and unveiling a roadmap to a terawatt of battery production. Today they're at 35 gigawatt hours, or that's where the Gigafactory is gonna get at the end of 2019. So we're talking about a 20, 30 X or more ramp up in battery capacity. And now the question becomes, is it gonna be you know the same technology, those 2170 cells? Is that the remaining 965 gigawatt hours? Or is there a new type of battery technology that Tesla wants to begin producing on their own? Um, I'm leaning more towards that being the case. If you'll read about the news, there's a ton of tension going on with Tesla and Panasonic. You know, I thought they would have been expanding Panasonic's role with the Gigafactory by now to move to start planning beyond 35 gigawatt hours for the semi truck, for the pickup truck, for energy station storage, for all these things that have been announced in Tesla's pipeline. Like they need more batteries. So why aren't they planning on it with Panasonic? Well, we add that up with the other rumors about you know, the shareholder meeting where Te Elon Musk and J.B. Straubel go on this riff about not letting the cat out of the bag, about having to control their own destiny in terms of battery cells. And I think that is exactly what they're going to tell us at the Battery Powertrain Investor Day. Just like the Autonomy Investor Day, they're going to have all of their leading executives come up, describe the technology they've been working on in excruciating detail, basically take the hood off all of this amazing tech that Tesla's been working on. Um, and it's going to be so, so exciting. So it's the perfect time to announce a structural step change and the sort of future roadmap of the battery technology. And I think this is when Tesla's going to unveil what many people have been speculating and expecting a, a move into vertically producing their own battery cells. Tesla's current and future vehicle lineup is directly tied to battery cell production and its supply chain. If the cell supply chain is the current bottleneck, Tesla must find a way to control their own destiny. A lot of this also is dependent on uh, our ability to uh, manufacture a lot of cells and make a lot of battery packs. So. Um, there's, there's not much point in adding product complexity if we um, don't have enough batteries. <laughs> then, then it's complexity with, but without gain. So um, we're, we're, we're matching the, uh, the product rollout according to the a scaling of, of battery production. Um, that's really the, the main limiting factor. Um, and, and then as we, as we scale battery production to very high levels, we actually have to look further down the supply chain um, and um, we, we, we might get into the mining business, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe a, you know, a little bit at least. Um, so we'll do whatever we have to to ensure that we can scale uh, at the fastest rate possible. 
So uh, to this point, we are going to have a battery and powertrain investor day uh, that uh, hopefully this summer, um, before the end of the year for sure. Because um, I think we, this is a um, big deal. I mean, I think if, if I were an outside investor, I would really focus on, on two things. Uh, what is the timeline to full self-driving? And wh what is your plan to scale and, uh, battery production and, and, and get the cost per kilowatt hour lower? Those, those are it's basically battery cells and full self-driving. Those are the two strategic things that are of most importance. This is, a, this is a key question, is we've got to scale battery production um, and match that to uh, vehicle demand. Do you guys want to say anything about that? Or We don't let the cat out of the bag too much, but you know, it's still in the bag. I mean, I, I think it's right on. I mean, those are yeah. exactly the right problems that we need to solve to scale, and they have, they have been for some time, but it's more obvious now than I think it ever was that uh, we, we need a large-scale solution to cell production. Yes and get the cost per kilowatt hour lower and energy density higher. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and we're, not sitting, yeah. we're not sitting idly by. We're taking all the moves required to be masters of our own destiny here, uh, technologically and otherwise. And I, I think you know, through, through all the uh, experience we've developed with partners and otherwise, uh, we, we, have a, we, will, we have solutions in place. This possible new venture sounds really exciting for Tesla, but why do they actually need to do this if they've been working with Panasonic since 2009 and Panasonic is actually in Gigafactory 1 in Sparks, Nevada, producing cells for Tesla? The theoretical max capacity for Gigafactory 1 was said to have been 35 gigawatt hours. And as of earlier this year, Tesla and Panasonic have not hit that theoretical maximum limit. With Tesla's pending vehicle lineup, it will require significantly more cell demand than the 35 gigawatt hours. In fact, Elon on a most recent earnings call said that they would in the near future be producing more than one terawatt hour of battery cells. And it has been well documented over the last year and a half that Panasonic has been the weak link in this battery cell production ramp up. Back in August of 2018, cell output was only at 20 gigawatt hours with a goal to get to the theoretical capacity of 35 gigawatt hours by the end of 2018. In September 2018, Panasonic said it would be adding three new cell lines to the Gigafactory by the end of the year. But in April of 2019, the Nikkei reported that Panasonic would not be making any new investments in Giga One or three. As of April 13th, 2019, Elon said that Panasonic was only producing 24 gigawatt hours. In other words, Tesla wants to move faster with cell production, but Panasonic is either unwilling or unable to. This is where Tesla's acquisition of Maxwell Technologies earlier this year becomes crucial. Maxwell's dry battery electrode tech will increase production capacity density by 16x and provide a 10 to 20% cost reduction in manufacturing. Maxwell also claimed to have a cell energy density increase from Tesla's current 250 watt hours per kilogram to 300 and with a pathway to 500. Tesla's most recent acquisition of high bar systems further solidifies my theory that Tesla is going to be their own cell producer. I'll let high bar CEO explain exactly what they do. High bar systems limited is an engineering based company. Uh, we specialize in precision liquid dispensing systems and automation for global markets. We're located in West Beaver Creek Business Park in the town of Richmond Hill, just north of Toronto. The company really started out as a basement operation, literally manufacturing these small precision metering pumps. The pumps were really used for one specific application, which was to dispense two microliter doses of electrolyte into the batteries that power your watch. Today, we service food, cosmetic, pharmaceutical businesses. Beyond that, the company has evolved to provide automation solutions to a lot of the world's premier manufacturers of consumer goods. Fundamentally, entering new markets was the foundation of Highbar's growth. 95% of what Highbar designs and manufactures here in Richmond Hill is export to uh, global markets. Innovation is really sort of a quintessential part of what we do. The reason why we can sell our automated systems to these consumer producing companies is because we have leading edge technology. Our awesome team of highly skilled engineers, 
tool makers, machinists, and uh, support staff who gives us the engine to, to build the growth in the company. So I have to say, the average tenure of a high bar employee is over 14 years. So that says something. As a result of Tesla becoming their own battery cell supplier, I believe it will give them more control over cell volume and cost, and not to mention single-handedly drive down the cost per kilowatt hour of batteries for the entire electric vehicle industry to benefit from. And I've got one final thought about Tesla becoming their own battery cell supplier. If they do manage to successfully produce more than a terawatt hour of battery cells, does that mean that they should change the name of the gig factory to TerraFactory? Sean Mitchell, All Things EV, thank you so much for watching this video. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. And if you're a regular, hit the like button and share this out anywhere you think might be valuable. I'll talk with everyone on the next video.